Hi, I'm Eloisa. Today, this video is about an update of the experiment self-responsibility that I'm doing in the family with me and three children. Um, as a brief background information, there are video, other videos on this YouTube channel, but brief background information. Eight months ago, so in January, the children moved out, out from outside of the house um, into tents and they have uh, an outside kitchen set up, an outside sort of living space that they can spend their time in. Uh, this was done for two main reasons. Uh, one was that they weren't keeping, like they weren't keeping the home and shared areas and space or the living environment very clean and tidy. Um, and it, uh, and it took a lot of effort on my part to help encourage that, or I was often picking up a lot after them. So they weren't actually seeing, um, how much, uh, mess or, or, yeah, contribution they were making to the mess in the house. I wanted them to realize and see their part in, in that and um and the importance of actually uh, when you're sharing a living environment of you actually cleaning up after yourself and keeping it clean and tidy the second reason was how they were treating me again i need to say that the way they were treating me was because um their dad and i both agreed with the way they treated me and i got a lot of it out of being this you know good mum um in the sense that i tidied up everything and i took away the consequences of their actions um because it was easier what I've found now is it wasn't actually easier because they didn't learn how to be self-responsible and that meant that I was setting up a dynamic where forever I would have to serve them or look after them in order for things to be okay. I've educated the children in how to clean, spent a lot of time with them over quite a number of years, so it's not that they can't. I found that it was their attitude towards cleaning and the way that they treated me that they weren't changing. Um, what I've learnt is that if you you can change your behaviour, um, and the children actually have for certain periods of time changed their behaviour in this experiment, um, but it's not lasting change because unless their attitude changes, which is an emotional shift in how they feel that you know that they should do things, or it's not should do things, but an attitude shift is just an emotional shift in what you believe and feel and do. And it has to be emotional because the emotions then almost, it almost automatically, if you deal with emotions, makes a physical change. That's my experience so far. Um, in fact, that's my experience every time that I've engaged. Uh, well, I've now got a, a reference divine truth teachings as taught by my friends Jesus and Mary Magdalene or AJ Miller and Mary Luck. And those teachings can be found at divinetruth.com. Their website, there's loads of videos and everything. Um, but I've been experimenting with these teachings for, well, I heard about them nine years ago. And since, and I've been experimenting since pretty much I heard, well, since after my uh, resistive period to even listening to them, I've been experimenting ongoingly. Um, this experiment, though, feels quite different to me as I feel like. A whole series of experiences over those nine years has led to me being really, really uh, keen on this experiment. This one's really about me understanding or learning about uh, the way God parents and finding out about how I'm not parenting the way God parents, as well as helping the children to actually become self-responsible people in their own right without being reliant on a parent or an adult or anyone else in the in the world. So uh, that's that's sort of, yeah, the motivation was about keeping the house clean and, and the way they treated me. Um, and those two things, I f um, what I found is though those were our main goals in this experiment, to bring awareness to, to what is actually happening and then to have the opportunity to change that kids to change their attitude and they're out they actually were asked to be outside until were well not asked they they were moved outside um, until their attitude changes and that is the requirement there must be an attitude shift it doesn't mean they have to be perfect cleaners it doesn't mean they have to treat me per like absolutely perfectly it means they need to change the attitude they had because the attitude before was like well i don't have to do anything and it doesn't matter that you have to clean up and the way i treat you is fine what are you talking about mum
you know, you've got the problem rather than seeing, well, hold on, no, the way I treat others is important. Um, if, if I want to have relationships, you, you obviously have a choice of how you treat others. But I feel that as a parent, I had given up sort of authority in our home. I'd given that authority to the children. And I also, um, yeah, wasn't claiming governing, you know, being the person um, in our home who at the moment, you know, wants to uphold a space of love and truth and do things good God's way. That means that I become the governor, if you like, of our home. And I totally didn't want to do that. Again, these are terms that come from Divine Truth um, assistance groups that you can look up on the Divine Truth um, channel. And I am using those purposely. It's sort of like having being the leader in my home um, in in terms of love and truth. And because at the moment I know I've been learning about those myself and I have been um, developing my understanding of what it means, to, you know, what, what love is, and I'm learning all the time all different new things. Um, but I feel like I have a responsibility actually to uphold the things that I do know about love and truth and God's way in our home. And I wasn't doing that. And this experiment was for the reason that I've mentioned to help the children to become more self-responsible. But it was, I found actually it's more about me working through the, uh, the emotional reasons why I s allowed those things to happen in the first place and why I, like what I wanted out of the situation with the children. Um, and I've just found so many things about myself and there's so many beautiful learnings that are happening with this experiment. I, I just feel like there's just numerous opportunities and so many benefits uh, that I'm finding and just so many things that I'm learning and I'm beginning to have to make experiments within the experiment. And it's kind of like they're not really individual experiments because they're spurred by the overall experiment of self-responsibility. But within in that big experiment, there's all these other things that are coming to light. So um, I, I suppose they're all related, really. It's just that, yeah, they are all related. They're all about self. So, for instance, I'm thinking about um, we began, which I've talked about in a previous video, that because of food shopping, I was purchasing all the food sort of for the kids, but that didn't actually teach them about you know, budgeting and knowing how much you can purchase and or finding out about quantities of how much you eat in a week or figuring out what healthy choices are in the sense of if, and you know, if you don't buy enough for a week, then you don't have any food by the end of the week. And then what are you going to do about that? And how can you, you know, um, become more responsible for your own, well, one, your own health and well-being and eating. Um, and it's, and this, this exercise highlighted quite a lot of areas where the children lack yeah, just love of self or or care of their own bodies and their own selves. Um, when I say that, they can make they make their own meals and they they're very good at cooking. They've got now recipes that they they enjoy and they make. Um, it's been quite lovely. Have friends and um, I also work for an organisation called God's Way, um, which if you want to know more about that organisation, you can go to godsway.net. And we have uh, uh, lunch gatherings with um, everyone who volunteers for that organisation um, every sort of, uh, well, once a month. And uh, the kids come along to those and at those, one of the volunteers will actually make a whole meal for everyone involved in the organisation. And so the kids sometimes come to those meals and they'll try different things and then they'll be like, oh, and they've, they've asked a number of people for recipes and then they've tried those recipes out at home. Um, again, that... I feel by this experiment, we had talks about that, but it was under their um, yeah their initiative that they said, "Hey, could I have this recipe?" And then they actually trialed it. And I'm noticing that this experiment is is teaching them. It's sort of highlighting a lot of areas where yeah that they lack, I suppose, skills or education, or they don't feel very good about themselves, even though they. Uh, present that they feel really good and uh, sometimes better than other people but it, it's just noticeable like and I'll, I'll share some of those things soon yeah the experiment on on self-responsibility for both the parent me and for the children is uh, just just so many benefits
So that's a bit of a, a long introduction. So I'd like to share some of my observations and some of the learnings that I've done and some of the experiences that have happened over the last few months since the last update in Experiment Self-Responsibility. So one of the things I've noticed is about change. You can't change unless you want to. An external force cannot force you to change. They can't make you change. They can't even really help you change. It has to come from inside of you and be a heartfelt desire for change. So uh, this first came up about a few months ago and Jesus and Mary were having dinner with us and they were talking to Izzy uh, just about the experiment and how she's finding it and asking her, you know, why was she outside and did she understand? And Izzy was kind of like, well, no, not really. I don't really know why I'm outside. And, and I was a bit shocked. I was like, what? Like, um, you know, I've because I'd explained very clearly like why, but it, it highlighted that that the kids don't really listen to me very much. And Mary actually pointed out. She said, "Well, I suppose you can't change, or you don't change unless you really want to change." And this brought up sort of a discussion and me sort of observing more closely the children in that they didn't really want to change yet, and I had an investment in them changing, and so I was trying to help them and and give a lot of energy and time. And with adults, I find that if someone doesn't change, you're wasting a lot of time if you're, if you're speaking to them all the time and constantly doing it. So it made me rejig and rather than sort of talking or inspiring them or helping the kids to do things to really observe, did they want to change? And then actually just talking to them about that and saying, Hey, like, a, you know, you, you're, you're saying that you want to get inside, but I'm observing that you continue to do the same thing. And that also brought up discussions about, did they really understand why they were outside? Um, and they could see, well, yeah, we leave the house messy and we don't clean up properly. And that then led to discussions of, well, why and how do they feel about cleaning up? And, you know, there's quite a bit of anger about even cleaning up at times, or they feel very unfair, like it's really unfair that we have to do it. I'll talk a bit more about that in a, in a second. The other thing was um, about tr the treatment of me. And I said, well, do you understand like well, how you're treating me badly? And I actually could answer that a little bit and say he could see a few areas that he, he was doing um, that he felt like, yeah, that's not really very kind. And if I was on the receiving end, I wouldn't like that. Um, whereas Izzy and Charlie didn't, the other two kids, they didn't really, they, they couldn't name how what they were doing. And that brought me to a fantastic discussion with them and a realization for myself that if you do not understand what you're doing or how you're behaving or what is causing a problem or why there is an issue, if you don't understand what in you is helping to create that, you can't change it because you can't find a solution to a problem that you don't understand. <laughs> Jesus says that all the time when we're working uh, for God's way or divine truth, but it's true. <laughs> uh, and it, it's something that I really could see in this experiment with the kids because they were saying they wanted to change. They, you know, they, and they would try really hard for a while. So they'd do this behavioral change. And this is one, one experience that happened is that they tried really, 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 really hard for, for a couple of weeks, actually put in a lot of effort. We're cleaning up really well, like really well, um, in comparison to what it had been inside. And I was really impressed, but they were doing it to get inside. It wasn't because there's this attitude shift in them of like, no, this is the right thing to do. Um, and inside, what I'd noticed is when they work together, so they've done jobs for years in the sense that um, they contributed to the household chores. So if I cooked, they'd then do the washing up, sweeping and um, drying up and, you know, wiping down and things like that. But always there was a fight between them of like, well, it's unfair. I've done more than so-and-so or she's done less than me or why do I have to do everything or he didn't do it properly last time and it was always like unfair and it always ended up in a disagreement and a fight and, you know, so instead of just getting on and doing the job, it took ages, I'd have to intervene about, well, guys, now you're treating each other badly, now there's another problem we have to deal with, like this is not going well. 
What I found with them moving outside was that they were responsible for their own gear, their own, like in the sense of their own cutlery, their crockery, their own, they've got their own, you know, um, fridge space. If it's not clean, you know, exactly whose isn't clean. They're seeing the response, like where they are not doing the right thing. And this was very good to help them to analyze, oh, I'm not doing the right thing. So regardless if someone is or isn't cleaning up, you know, and I'm having a big fight of how unfair it is, I'm also not doing the right thing. And I could explicitly like point that out to them and it, they couldn't say well no I didn't do that or she did that because it was their own own space um, and this has been very helpful and now when I invite the children in sometimes for meals they just get on and do their jobs and they actually do them a lot better than they were previously which is really good but it backtrack to the fact um, I was just talking about change and you're needing to understand what what's going on to change um like what you what the issue is before you can change it or find a solution to a problem you need to understand the problem and then the second thing that we were, I was just talking about was how they were trying to make behavioral change rather than an emotional or attitude shift and when they did that there it, it never works you, you i've just found time and time again that if i do not deal with the emotional reason for the action that I'm taking in my life, the change is not permanent. I will revert back to the previous behavior if it's only been an intellectual or um, physical change. So the children have a belief that, that if they try harder and they do more and they physically do more, that somehow that means they're going to make a change. Now, I've talked about this, I've demonstrated this, I, they even have had examples where they've had an emotional um, experience or, and response to certain things, and then they've actually had like an almost seemingly automatic change. The change occurs because of the emotional, um, the emotion that they've released, and they've all had this experience. But because the belief with the dad, their dad and in the world, like at their school and all, and in a lot of other areas, is like, no, just keep doing the physical thing and it, you know, it will happen. I'm telling you, it doesn't. And they learned that it doesn't. <laughs> so when they tried really, really, really hard, and I still said, well, your attitude's still the same. They got really, really, really angry. <laughs> and that was a, like, <laughs> That was quite confronting for me, but it was actually a step in the right direction. Um, the fact that they started to get angry indicated to me, great, now some emotions are coming up. Now they are being more real because before they were just having the sort of facade of like, look, see, I'm doing the right thing. I I'm, I'm getting better. See, look how great I am. Can I come inside now? And, and, you know, now they're going through the angry phase and this is a very good space to go through. Um, I, I should mention uh, that Archie's actually got inside and um, now because his attitude has shifted and he did go through a lot of anger at the beginning. Uh, quite a lot of that was passive aggressive and withdrawn and um, and the other two kids were Izzy's beginning now to get quite angry. Uh, Charlie's still sort of just trying to do the right thing, um, has a bit more to go on on actually letting himself own how angry he is about the whole thing. So he's more projecting his anger rather than feeling it at the moment. Yeah, so that so that was kind of a long-winded way of saying the importance of actually desiring to change. You have to want to change and it has to come from your own heart and your own desire. doesn't matter how much inspiration happens. If you don't have aspiration, aspiration meaning, you know, that you have a desire to do it or you have faith in the process that you can do it, um, it's not going to change. So that was one learning that we've learned and a, a sort of a big lesson and one now that I refer back to a lot with the children about, um, yeah, just about their choice to change or their lack of choice to change and measuring what they're actually doing in regards to um, where they're at. And again, if you want some more information on measuring change or becoming, you know, like sort of assessing where you're at emotionally, um, the 2014 Divine Truth Assistance Group is very good um, for that as well as all the rest of the assistance groups. But um, I remember that was the first time I heard about it and I recommend that those talks. Now in there, when we're talking about change and how, uh, yeah, I suppose that's brought up for me as well just on change that 
I can be invested as I want in the children changing. And I notice a lot of parents like this. They want the children to, to change, but they're not willing to change. And it made me realize like one, well, okay, how has this been like this attitude in them being fostered or created? Like, why do they feel they can't change? Because that's what came up, um, their response, which I thought was very, yeah, it was just really interesting when they tried really, really, really hard and then they still didn't get un inside because they hadn't actually changed their attitude. It was really interesting to see their response and, and they just all basically gave up and, and they're very angry, but they were like, well, we can't do it we're not going to be able to do it. Like you, it's too hard and it's all right for you or it's all right for someone else. Like they all thought that the other kids could do it, but that they wouldn't be able to. And this highlighted a belief in them that they can't do it. So sometimes the kids come and they've got great ideas and yeah, really, really fun, fun ideas and things that they want to do and achieve, but they don't really take any actions to achieve those things. And I could relate to my own past history. I, man, I haven't got a shortage of ideas, but at really doing everything it takes to make that idea a reality and to actually do and um, yeah, create that idea, I, I've also had a real problem with that. And so it was really interesting to to see this this yeah reflection in the kids of like I can't do it, and. What I'm finding as well with this experiment, once these things happen and these sort of lessons are learned, I start seeing them as well in the wider world. Uh, so another friend of mine also expressed and, you know, how she feels like unless she's given validation, unless she's encouraged, unless she's told she's doing a really great job, even if she's not doing a great job, she pretty much feels like she's, she's terrible and useless and nothing like inside. And it's almost like without the external yeah, validation, she, she doesn't even really want to do anything. And this is, uh, I think I've been watching a bit of uh, information on millennials on, on the on the TV, some, some satire kind of things, which is quite funny, but they're actually quite true that it made me realise like how much the three kids really don't believe that they can do certain things. Um though they portray that they're really good at things or that they've got it under control or they know what they're doing or that they're really, um, yeah, that, that they're very competent. And then I watch them actually doing things and they're not. And so I'm realizing that I can't believe what they're saying. I have to look at what they're doing and their actions and their attitude towards issues, like to, towards events or things. Um and I also need to look at, well, what have I done to contribute to them being that way? And I've praised them when they didn't do the right thing at times because I felt like I didn't want them to feel bad like I did as a kid. Um, terrible disservice to them that I've done. I've taken away the opportunity for them to actually just have the natural consequence of something. So, um, uh, like when they were little, they would go into the dam and they would get completely muddy and then they would run all through the house and leave dirty marks everywhere and I'd clean them up. They never had to clean up their own messes. So they, they didn't, so now I'm noticing that that's a really big disservice because now I'm noticing they don't notice the mess they make. Now, if it's a huge mess, they notice it, but they don't notice like just when they had, say, sticky hands and they open the door and the door handle's sticky. Um, they don't notice if they, you know, just got, they haven't, um, you know, you just get sweat and grime during your day and you turn on the light switch and it's a bit grubby. They don't notice these very, like the smaller things about cleaning up. And that's because I took the opportunity away when they have children. It's not that they can't do it. Like if it's pointed out, they go, oh yeah, fine. And they do it and they can clean it up but they're not noticing it. There's got to be a reason for that. And I feel that I'm directly responsible or half responsible as one of their parents for encouraging them not to actually clean up after themselves, not to notice things, um, etc. I also notice in schools, honestly, the rewards programs are just terrible. They get rewarded for all kinds of stuff, even when they don't do the right thing, you know? And so they don't believe that they even have to do the right thing. And when I say that, that means like, they don't get the self-satisfaction of just being organized and learning for learning's sake. They feel like they need a reward for if they're going to put in a little bit of effort. Um, you know, like it, it's, it's a really big disservice we're doing to this generation. And I'm quite concerned because uh, the three kids in my care and what I have created and, 
if they were in a workforce and I was employing them, it would be so disastrous, like nothing would get done. And they would think that they'd just be telling me that I'm treating them badly because I'm not thinking they're doing a great job. So this is why to me it's so important that I change what I've created because I don't want them going into a workforce you know, basically trying to boss their employer around and telling their employer that the employer is treating them badly and that they should be paid pretty much for doing a a crap job that the employer has to clean up after them. That doesn't seem right to me anymore. Um, And I I purposely use right because in the past, that's exactly what I was teaching them. Like, no, uh, mummy will do everything for you. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, another another thing I see, see as a disservice is that when parents don't let a child fight their own battles, um, meaning that you can support a child in doing the right thing and speaking up and standing up, but not giving the child the opportunity to actually do it themselves. So that's another thing that this experiment and over the last few months I've been encouraging is, um, so as an example, Archie wanted to live at my house um, for the majority of the time and then arrange with his dad to go and live with him like on weekends or at when he wants to do extracurricular activities or at ta- you know spend time when he desires to at um, at his dad's place. And I I was like, well, we taught I discussed this with with him and I said, well, what are your reasons and why do you want to do that? And just, just had a discussion, I suppose, about it without me um, being like, yes, I want you to do that or no, you shouldn't do that or you need to, you know, I didn't, I didn't put my stuff onto him. I had feelings about that and I had to um, feel those, but I didn't impose them upon him. And, and I said, well, okay, if you want to do that, then, then how are you going to go about it? And he said, well, I'll probably need to talk to dad. And I said, yes, you will. And I said, look, I'm happy to be there if you'd like, um, but you need to lead that discussion. Um, so we arranged a time and we had a family meeting and he, he, he talked to his dad about that and, um, it, you know, and, and, and we had a discussion about it. What I noticed was that it really empowered him to feel that he could say what he wanted to say, um, and that his choices would be, um, at least listen to. Um, we had a discussion and his dad said, look, I'd like to do that as a trial period because, you know, I really like spending time with you and um, et cetera, et cetera. And can we see how that goes? And I just said, yeah, no, we can do that and and did it. But but since then, and that was some months ago, you know, his dad, Pete, and I've had some chats and also um, talked to Archie about it. And the positive thing that I've noticed about it is that, Archie feels more, uh, he's just more confident in his opinions and that he's actually going to be listened to and that he's not just going to be overridden and his parents are just going to make him, force him to do things. Um, And this, I suppose, links back to choices and the importance of choices. And that's something that I'm talking to the kids a lot about is that, you know, so for Archie, he made a choice and then he, he had to then action his choice and he had to take some steps in order to inform someone about his choice. And then I, like I had a discussion about his choices and asked him why and what and, you know, his, his reasoning for those choices. And I feel like this is a very positive way to interact with, with anyone actually, not just children. Choices also has come up a lot with the children about their attitude, that it's a choice that they remain where they are. It's a cho- in the sense of their attitude not shifting. It's a choice for them to take physical actions rather than emotional actions. It's their choice how they treat other people. So when they feel that, so back to this unfair thing that I mentioned earlier um, and how unfair they felt it was, they didn't see that their choice to be angry and feel how unfair it was towards the other children caused them, one, not to actually do a good job that would be a service to anyone using the environment. It was a choice to actually be very self-involved about how they were being treated badly, but not actually even observing that they were treating any everyone else in the in the household badly because the plates weren't clean, they had dirt on them, um, the cups weren't cleaned properly, so every time I got a cup I had to cl- re-clean it. So they didn't actually see that their choice to remain angry and upset and embroiled in how unfair it was for them caused them actually to be unfair to others and that that was a choice not to care about someone else and it was also not really caring for them because they'd also have to redo their dishes because they weren't doing it properly in that example. 
So the choices are just so important. And I just keep now reminding them, like they're like, whoa, I can't do something. or And I'm like, no, there's a choice. Like there's an emotional reason why you feel that, but there is a choice you could make and you could make a different choice. Another example um, was that this this time there's some violence that's been happening. It's been happening for a long time in our family. So um, when the children were very small, they were actually quite violent towards me due to the way that their dad feels about certain things and the, what I was open to um, in sense of violence. So they'd hit me and bite me and, you know, pull, pull my hair and uh, those kind of things. And when they're very small children, you know, I, I, well, I just thought it was my problem, to be honest, and accepted it. But what I noticed is that um, over time I we restrained, I restrained them for that or restricted them so they, whenever they hit someone. So they learned that they couldn't actually punch me anymore or hurt me in that way, though they still will try emotional methods to, to do that. Um, but what I'm finding is that I'm noticing that they're playing the emotional and physical violence out between each other. And I'm calling it violence purposely. And it also is on the way to being abusive. And when I say that... I know that's a uh, conflictual term, but because they treat each other in that manner consistently for a long period of time now, I feel like it could lead to abusive situations. And if they were adults and they were hitting each other, honestly, it is abusive because it can be assault. And we talked about this um, as a family of that if you hit somebody and as an adult, you can actually go to prison for that. Um, we also talked about emotional violence and how, you know, like about how undermining somebody or pulling them down or always telling them they're wrong or being really condescending to them all the time. These are forms of emotional abuse and violence that if if you don't change those things that you can really harm another person with those. And we talked about the reasons why they are engaging those behaviors and what they get out of those behaviors or again, choices. <laughs> so Again, it's their choice, you know, and so we've had this experiment because um, some things happened between the children. What I've done is what happens in the spirit world, and if a child or someone would be attacking another person, they'd actually be removed from the person they're attacking so that they can't harm them anymore um, as a child, and they would then be given a lot of attention and help in order to correct the re their emotional reasons inside of themselves where they feel that they they can um, you know, and that it's okay to harm violently someone else. So that leads me to another experiment that I've now set up within the self-responsibility experiment, though it links in because the way you treat someone else is an issue of self-responsibility. You're responsible for how you choose to treat another person. Yeah, and this, uh, so oh, I'm not sure whether to talk about this experiment now. In brief, I'll talk about it, and then we'll talk about it maybe in another video more in depth. But in brief... What I've done is um, because Arch has moved inside now and he's on probation as an aside because he still has an attitude, like he still hasn't, he, he's, he's not perfect in the way he cleans up yet. His attitude has shifted over the last eight months in the sense that he's become more aware of what he's doing. His attitude to actually cleaning up has become much better and he, yeah, he, he cleans up without sort of being asked as much. He also is like... Uh, doing that not just in my home but when he goes to visit other people and he does it willingly whereas the other two sort of feel impelled to or follow his example to they don't have this feeling of like yeah it's the right thing to do I'm going to do that or um, it's something that I could do to help somebody um, Archie for a period of time after his initial anger about the whole situation came in and started saying hey mum I'd like to help you you know, um, can I help with the cleaning or can I help you cook something? I don't have to eat any of it, but I'd just like to come in and be with you to help you cook. And he began also being more interested in me in the sense of he doesn't have to be, but he just was. He would ask me questions and he'd never done that before. It was quite a shocking uh, experience at first. I was like, what? You really want to know? <laughs> Which obviously there's some feelings in me even that I had that response. But it, his attitude shifted and so he's come inside. Now, it's a bit of an aside, but the reason why I mention that is he now has a space that he can go, which means that we also have a front and back veranda. And so um, what's happened is because the children all have had a dynamic um, and the two older ones are, well, uh, the dynamic is 
that uh, Charlie actually treats Izzy and Archie quite badly and is willing to be violent um, emotionally and physically with uh, with Archie. And he's um, quite emotionally violent with Izzy and, uh, yeah, willing to be physically violent with her as well. Um, then Izzy feels quite, like, upset and quite angry about some things at the moment. She feels it's okay to to use physical you know, uh, means to prevent um, Archie from doing certain things. And she also feels it's okay to um, be quite sort of manipulative with the boys when when she's trying to get some power back in the relationship. So, um, and Archie responds um, at times to being to this, but he doesn't usually instigate any physical violence towards the other two. It's more sort of response at the moment. So that's sort of the dynamic. So, what we've done is uh, we've taken the one who is the most unloving, if you like, or doing the the most, you know, treating two people badly in the household, and he gets the most restriction. So, and then um, Izzy gets the next most restriction, and then Arch. So it's it's based upon what they're doing and where they're at and the choices that they're making. So there's um, different things that happen. So there's a front and back and veranda that are used uh, where they need to be isolated and they have, they've had to come up with and negotiate times because um, their kitchen's at the back and their kind of living space at the front. So they negotiate times where they spend different times at different areas of the house. I go and spend time with each of them and I ensure that I don't, I, I used to spend the most time with the most disruptive or the child who was actually being the most unkind to the other children. Now I'm really making an effort to reward good behaviors and not behaviors, but, um, the, the right attitude or when they're actually being loving and to really honor the thing that they're doing right. And that was something that I learned via Archie getting inside was, this wonderful reward for doing, like for changing your attitude. So uh, to change his attitude and when I said to him, look, uh, we were having actually a family meeting about how to sort out this violence issue and um, I was setting up the parameters for that and I said to Arch, well, you're actually, your attitude I've noticed has changed and I really feel like you could move inside now. And his response was just so priceless. He was just, he, he was crying. He's like, I'm just so happy and I don't know why I'm crying, but I'm just so happy. And he was like, Mum, you know, I just, I didn't think I'd get inside until I was an adult. And that, that links back to what I said before of just how the kids, honestly, they thought they'd never get inside and they had this belief. And so it sort of stopped them at times even trying. And that was uh, uh, something that I learned, which was really limiting. Anyway, then also then Archie, like he, he came in and that, and he was like, Oh, well, I'll move in tomorrow. And I said, well, Why would you move in tomorrow? Like, you know, you, you, you have said you can move in. You, your attitude has changed, is changing. You're on probation because it's not totally changed yet, but you've got the right attitude now. So let's see how we go. And he was like, Oh, can I move in tonight? And I was like, Of course you can. Like God rewards, you know, what we do that's in harmony with, 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 you know, love and truth and God's way immediately or in harmony with God's laws immediately said. So I think we should emulate that too. So when you do the, you know, do something that's in harmony with God's laws, then that needs to be rewarded. And then you get the immediate benefit of the reward. So he came in and he's like, oh, bed, this is amazing. I'm in a bed. They've got camping and, and set up outside. It's it's comfortable outside. But it was just his reaction to being inside was just so lovely. He's like, mom, is it okay if I use this? And is it okay if I borrow a book? And is it okay if I play with the games? And, well, how are we going to do food? Like, how are we going to cook? Like, what's that going to be like? And um, what about cleaning? Like, how are we going to do that? And I was like, well, these are all really good questions, Archie. And, you know, it's great that you're asking. How about we just have a meeting and we discuss all these things? So um, so we uh, organised to have a meeting. Um, but that first night, he like he basically just stayed up till 10 o'clock just going through all these toys that he hasn't used for ages and just, you know, like walking around the house and looking at all these things. And he was really polite and he asked me, you know, if he could use things if they were mine. Um, he used all the games and he played every. He stayed up till 10 o'clock and that's really late in our house. We we don't are usually in bed like 6.37 and, you know, sleep by 7.38 and or earlier. And... Um, yeah, so he 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 just stayed up, just enjoying enjoying being inside, and he's just I love being inside, and how can I help, and what can I do? And it wasn't like a, it was sort of just this natural response to 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 the joy of being inside, and 
and I realized how much I haven't rewarded um, when the kids have done the right thing. I just sort of have, have expected that they should do the right thing and then spend a lot of energy and time when they haven't done the right thing. And what I realized through this experience is that because that was how I would be doing things, the kids actually got more of my time and energy when they were doing the wrong thing. And especially when they were little and and I kind of feel like I've just had this all ass about or or that's colloquialism for having it all around the wrong way because I'd kind of yeah like giving a lot of attention to something that's not in harmony with say God's laws or you know the what's what's loving and truthful and etc and that sort of taught them that they don't really need to do the right thing because they're still going to get rewarded for for not doing the right thing and when i was talking about right thing I'm, I'm really talking about morally right um so like right from god's perspective and also just the self-responsible thing like all kinds of things yeah so i learned that there's so much benefit um when someone is actually rewarded for it like i didn't give anything extra to archie it was just the the feeling of joy that he had of and self satisfaction and achievement that he had of from actually doing like changing his attitude and then getting inside was just lovely. It was really lovely to observe. I suppose while we're on that, uh, it was very interesting to see the other kids' reaction. So um, Izzy was really upset and quite angry, and was it was she was so lovely and honest though, so lovely and honest. She just like so jealous and I just feel really angry about it and I feel like it's just unfair and and she said but you know at least I feel like yeah it's a possibility they might be able to get inside now um so I feel like it's been good as well for the kids who aren't inside yet in the sense that they can see yes it is possible talked about that we looked at like look it's been eight months um and Archie's actually emotionally like he's just felt more emotions it's that simple um and all they need to do is feel emotions and then they were um, talking to Jesus the other day as well, and and I was saying, well, you know, it's eight months, and and they could they could be back in. And Jesus was like, well, it could be a lot faster if you had a relationship with God and you did it God's way, um, because with God's things are much much faster. And the kids came home after that conversation, and they were like, wow, how fast do you think I could get in, Mum? And I was like, well, you know, that's really up to you. Again, back to choices. You know, what choices you make, and if you want to start exploring a relationship with God, you could experiment with that, and you could see how fast it is on your own or with Him. So, a lot of positive things that came from actually moving inside. But I realised that I I'd been observing for quite a long time, like for probably a month. That Archie's attitude has been consistently changing, that he's not just with me, it's when he goes to other places, he's instigating things with other people as well. It's not just a behavioral change. But I didn't want to feel that I was, I didn't want the other kids to accuse me of being unfair to them. And so I hadn't rewarded him sooner because I had felt that basically selfishly that I would feel like a bad mum and that the other kids would be like, well, you're, you're being mean to us kind of thing. And I felt quite sad about that um, once I had actually said, no, Archie, you can come in now, because I realised that my, yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't done right by, by him doing the right thing. And that's just made me now realise, uh, well, it was good because it brought up this feeling of how I don't want to be attacked for you know, or, or when I say attacked or even someone just disapproving on me of me because I feel guilty um, and just to avoid a simple emotion in myself, which, you know, isn't actually when I actually felt it wasn't. When I say it feels bad in the moment, but it was a pretty poor reason, I think, to not do the honour um, and reward what what is really what was really well done on Archie's part in this case feel like that's the same now with the other kids when they do the right thing they're in harmony with the law that I need to make that as transparent as the things that are in disharmony with God's laws and those are things that I'm starting to see ah oh, and I had I had reasons in myself that prevented me doing that it didn't prevent me it just meant that I didn't realize what I was doing um kind of until I got some external feedback um, and some encouragement, I suppose. Well, no, just inspiration. And then made some different choices. And at, when I made the different choices, I could see what I had been doing in contrast to what I was doing. And the rewards for me as well with Archie's reaction were really amazing. 
because I was like, wow, like just the expression of joy that a person can have when they do the right thing just because it's the right thing to do. He wasn't getting anything back for that. I wasn't giving him anything for that. He did that on his own back. Um, and also the other um, on-flow, like there's many benefits that have happened, but the other on-flow effect of this experiment is that now that he's inside, it feels like it's this whole new opportunity to educate and redo things in a completely different manner than what we had been doing. It kind of feels like you get a second chance because he's dealt with the attitude of why he wasn't doing the right thing. This is Archie in this case. And so now that he's come in, his attitude's completely different, which means that the whole way that we set up our household and the whole way that we actually do jobs in the house, um, you know, is just completely different. And the, the resistance or, you know, like the resistance in the sense of the pushback. So uh, an example is of resistance or pushback is like, I'll ask the kid, like in the past I've been like, look, can you guys like clean up? And, you know, it's like three hours later, they're dragging their feet, I have to ask them, it's not done properly. It's really hard work on my part to just keep it, trying to get them to do it because they don't want to. And instead of them just going, I don't want to do that, and then us having a discussion or, you know, having to face that issue, they're like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, we'll do it. And then they go off and do their own thing for, you know, like until it's convenient for them. Now, that's all very well if you're living in your own home, but if you've just made a meal and then you go off for three hours and you leave all your dishes and someone else wants to come and make a meal, then you have to do their dishes in order to do it or you've got to ask them to come back and do it. Now, what I've noticed with um, Archie returning into the home is that sometimes he still forgets to do his stuff, but I just have to say, hey, Arch, that wasn't clean properly, and he's off there just immediately doing it and doing a good job um, in most cases. And I was like, I was, I was like, wow, that's, that is a shift. That's quite a change. And then we've had some discussions about, look, you know, these are the on-flow effects, and now we're sharing a space, but, you know, even while you've been outside, you know, it's just been about you and you doing your own thing. But inside, we can choose to, yeah, we're sort of setting it up more as like a, um, a flatmate situation. And so some nights we might cook together and do jobs together. And some nights he does his own thing and I do my own thing. Um, and we just talk about that, you know, as, as we want to do it. Or sometimes I might want to make something and share it with him. And sometimes I don't. And again, this is choices and I'm learning a lot about sharing. For me, I was sort of felt like I had to share um, as a child. The children, like, they kind of expect the other ones to share, but they don't always really want to share. <laughs> and I'm teaching them they don't have to. But instead of sort of uh, projecting emotionally about that, well, you're being mean to me now or you're not being nice because you're not giving me something, to just feel how they feel um, sad that someone doesn't want to share with them or for Izzy it's a bit different she the boys kind of feel it's fine just to have their own thing they don't actually have a problem with not sharing whereas Izzy sort of feels that a little bit like well she's reflecting me and feels that she has to share in order to be a good person and sometimes she shares and then realizes she didn't really want to do that or she didn't really have the motivation because she wanted to it was more that she feels that if she doesn't then the boys project at her that she's being not very nice to them or that she should do it so it's bringing up different you know emotions in 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 in, diff in the different genders um as well as each different individual child because each individual child has a different sort of feeling another comment on what you know with the kids that i always sort of talk to about the kids is that um archie is younger is the youngest um he's also the per the one who's felt the most emotions in our family. When I was pregnant with the kids, it was like completely different for each child and where they were at was different. So when I when I was pregnant with Archie, I'd heard about divine truth. I wasn't necessarily practicing it at that time when I first had him. But by the time he was like four or five, we were definitely I was definitely implementing and putting into practice some of the principles and teachings that I'd heard. I was all, we were also um, restricting the children physically when they were like demanding or violent or, you know, unloving to each other in order to demonstrate that they were breaking God's laws. This is when they were very small. Now I, we, I use different methods of restriction. So we were mentioning about how they're being quite violent to each other and they get separated. Um, and I need to talk more about this in a sec. So with Archie, he's had more like, uh, though he's felt sometimes that's been unfair to him, he also has had the most emotional, you know, um, ex like releases in his life. 
which is just super helpful for him. And we've noticed that um, because of that, it's also got an onflow effect into his schooling. Um, he, he, his learning, like, um, an incident happened, oh, probably like a year and a half ago where some stuff was going on at school and he ended up, um, having like this cry, like for probably about an hour. And, um, we were just discussing it the other day, Archie raising his going, Oh, I'm so on, un- cause we we're talking about him being late to school and he'd, and how he's changed from um, he used to be really worried about being late to school and now he's quite relaxed about it, about it, which is another shift that he's had. He was like, yeah, except that one time when I was like an hour late, you know, because you, you wouldn't let me out of the car. And I was like, do you remember why? And he was like, well, because I was crying and I was angry and whatever. I said, yes, and do you remember that after that, like what actually happened? And he'd had this cry, like meltdown, like he'd had a big rage and he'd had, a, when I say meltdown, he'd, He'd gone through like a lot of some anger during the, during when he was feeling his, his feelings. Um, and he'd had a really big cry, like sobbed his heart out, um, a couple of years ago. And the teachers actually commented about a month or so later that, um, his academics had really improved, like not like they were just like, well, we're not quite sure why, but he's really noticeably improved academically. And I feel that it's because of this release he had, uh, like emotional experience he had. Yeah, so so we sort of talk. I talked to Archie about that, and I also the other kids have had experiences very similar to this about other things, and they've also had positive results afterwards. And I just keep reminding them of this because they seem to forget those experiences and then feel like, well, I can't do anything. So yeah, so I was relaying that because for each child it's a bit different, and as we said to the children, like it might take the other two a bit more longer time if they choose to do it on their own without doing it, but you know, with God. Um, but they could do it much faster as well. So that got the competition and uh, feelings in, in Charlie going. He's like, well, I want to do it faster than Archie. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see. He, he, at the moment, he's still pretty much the same. Um, but that was an interesting response in itself and highlighted something else in the children that I'm um, learning of how much competition there is um, between them. Um, I, I kind of, so it's a bit all over the place this talk because just so many things have happened and, I'm sort of just relaying all of these experiences. And then as I'm sort of speaking, I'm thinking of other experiences that I'm remembering and, and how they do it. And I, I'm sharing them, I suppose, if I recap of all the experience I've shared so far, one of them is, is about change and how, you know, you can only change when you have a heartfelt desire to. No one else can force you to change. Um, you have to want to change in order to do it. And change doesn't happen unless you want it. I've always talked a lot about choices and how important it is to see that you are making choices and that you can make different choices and also that your choices are important. But making choices is good in the sense that you get feedback for what you do and if you can reflect on what's happening and then trial and make different choices, you can rapidly go, you know, from, I don't know, being, well, having an attitude where you feel entitled that someone should do something for you to actually changing your attitude to realizing that when someone does something to you, it's a gift. Um, and you can go through that emotionally. So I feel like that's really important. I've also been just discussing how making transparent when, when a child or, or you as an adult are in harmony with God's laws and rewarding that is so important and the benefits and also just the rewards for for doing the for doing the right thing from God's perspective like how how much you get for that and how much satisfaction you get and the example of Archie moving in, inside for that of of I didn't realize how powerful that experience was for him but also for for um for me um just seeing the joy in somebody when when they're acknowledged for for what they've done right. Another thing that I've noticed since then is that it was really interesting because Archie was he got moved inside that day, then he went to school and he had all these positive things happen to him. Uh in that he got moved up um, you know, a grade in maths and he um what else? There were a number number of things that happened anyway and he came home just so excited of like, Mom, like uh, all these good things are happening in my life. <laughs> um and that reminds me, uh, um, about a month ago, he was quite lovely as well. And, and he was like, I just, he, he came out sometimes with these things of like, I just feel so happy at the moment. Like my life is just so happy. Like I'm really sad. I've still got a lot of sadness, but I just feel like 
you know, there's some really good things happening in my life. And he started expressing that about a month earlier. And then these other things happened, you know, we got inside and he did good at school and all these things. And then I've noticed because that happened probably like, gosh, it's about a month ago now that he, he moved in. Um, and what I noticed is that since those things, his confidence has grown. He's starting to make links about when for himself about when he's doing the right thing and how it feels good for him when he does that. He's starting to, I'm noticing that he's experimenting with his self-expression. He's growing his hair long and he wants to have a man bun. And he's like quite, you know, like uh, self-assured about what he wants and what he likes. He doesn't have as much, uh, like he's not as tentative about stating his wants or desires. What else are these things that I'm noticing? He's actually noticing interpersonal relationships at school between other siblings um, that are actually quite similar to what's happening in our home. Like power play between them and um, he comes home and he expresses, he says, look, this is happening and I don't think it's very nice and I don't like this. And then we have a chat and I say, well, what do you think's going on? I said, what do you think that's reflecting about that family and what do you think is reflecting with these these kids? Like what are their beliefs or how do they think they can treat other people? And he's starting to sort of reflect upon those things from his own like instigation, um, which I think is really interesting. He's asking quite interesting questions and expressing um, some interesting like ideas about things and the way the world works or what he's noticing in the world. Um, and all of these things I'm just noticing, they've been, I suppose they've been marinating, if you like, but in just in the past month, it just seems greater at the moment, an increase in, in him doing this. It's also, I was talking to his school and the, the, you know, the principals also noticed um, some, some changes in his confidence. And that was something that, that previously, you know, we were a bit concerned about for him. Um, and also, uh, we'll, we'll just see what happens. But why I mention those things is I feel like he's now had some experiences and feelings in himself where he's recognizing The joy and satisfaction he gets from from making choices that are in harmony with God's laws. And I'm not telling him a lot of these things. I can just see reflected in his behavior and his attitude and just the conversations that he has and his demeanor with other people um, as well as myself. It's quite different than what it used to be. Um, and I really feel this is due to him, you know, um, working through certain emotions that he's had. That means feeling his emotions, whatever those are, like at times he's been angry and sad. Now, that's another thing. He made a comment and he said, Mom, I just noticed that I'm less, like, angry um, in general. And, you know, he said, I'm still angry about certain things and I get angry. And I said, yeah, we had this discussion about how, what it is that he's angry about, whereas before he just kind of felt angry about everything and was just taking it out on on his siblings or on me at times or, you know, just uh, uh, sort of on himself in different ways. And that has changed quite a lot, which has made him quite a lot happier. I think that he also, when I, I've interviewed him, I'm not sure if it will get up on YouTube, but where I interviewed him before actually saying, oh, you can come inside now about his experiences of being in outside and his feelings about that. And he was quite articulate about what he, he felt were some of the benefits and some of the things that he was finding hard or that he was noticing um, and some of the things that he didn't like or he did like. It's quite noticeable um, when a person, anyone for this matter, I'm just talking about the children here, um, actually starts to make changes in emotional shifts and real change, how that actually affects the rest of their life. And I feel really privileged to have the opportunity to observe this because I just feel like I'm privileged every time that I see anybody actually making positive change in their life. Uh, I feel so excited for them. Uh, I just know for myself how, yeah, how, how, how good it feels to, to actually make emotional shifts and to, to really permanently change things by sometimes it seems like 
magic it does and that's what Archie uh, just reminds me of Archie saying something it's quite funny he was like I was like well how you know how's this change come about like why do you, how do you think you got to this place this point he's like well I just woke up one day and that's how it was <laughs> it's like but you must have done something because you know like you woke up you know two months ago and you weren't like this so what's happened and I think that that he the way he expressed it is sometimes how it feels like I know I've had the same feeling of like you know someone said oh you you know you're a bit different on this issue or you seem like you're a bit different now or you seem like you're happier now and I'm like oh really it's like yeah well yeah actually I do and they're like well how do you do that I'm like I don't know I just woke up like that one day it's not true and now that I've examined it or um as I've watched Archie um he's certain events have happened he's made different choices he has um it's not like he intellectually thought about this um but he actually went he he, he just when something came up he often would ha would feel his emotions about that so he'd feel angry or he'd feel sad or he'd feel afraid about it he's taken on board ideas that may have been suggested to him and trialed those and then seen the results of it. So there's another thing that I wanted to to speak about is um, like personal experience and how important um, personal experience is. This, the self-responsibility um, experiment just for that has been amazing. I gave up, I used to sort of try and do things always for the children or tell them things and talk to them. Honestly, like they don't listen. Like I mentioned earlier in this 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 video, they don't listen to me because as long as they get a certain feeling from me, that's all they're wanting. And so my, what I actually say doesn't matter. And so they miss out on a lot of things. And what I realized at the beginning of this experiment is I need to stop talking and I just need to take some actions. And I found for me that was fantastic. It made I was less angry. I could see things um, like much more objectively. Um, I had some space so I could actually leave a situation, deal with my own stuff and then go and deal with them in a, a loving manner rather than a harsh or punishing manner. I'm them, many the kids. And I had now have found like, that it's such like it, it's just yeah just just so good like they have are learning through their own experience they are learning that if they don't you know if they don't clean up their dish you know it's covered in ants in the morning or if they leave out their compost bucket and they don't put it or their worm bucket and don't take it to the worms or put it in a you know dig it into the soil or the ground then they have a heap of mess to clean up in the morning because a kangaroo comes past <laughs> and knocks down their scrap buckets and eats eats it and then poos on the veranda. Um, and they had to learn after, you know, a few days that, okay, we must put the scrap bucket if it's full up on the top of the fridge or somewhere where the kangaroo can't get it or we have to empty it that night. Um, they've also learned that if they don't empty their scrap buckets within a couple of days, they're moldy and everything's, it's kind of more gross to deal with and everything's like decomposing. So it's dirty. Um, and so they learned by those experiences and it only took one or two times and they go, yeah, I don't like dealing with that. So I'm going to do it, do it further. Now I'm not saying necessarily the attitude is like, I really want to do it yet, but their experience dictates, well, no one else is cleaning up after me and it needs to be done, um, particularly when it's their things. Still, they have this thing with others that's not so good um, in the sense that they don't really care about um, how they treat others as much as they feel it's very important about how much they're treated badly or not. Yeah, so just to recap, um, we I was just talking about at the beginning just a brief recap of why I was doing this experiment and giving you an update about what's happened in my observations. I sort of was discussing some of the experiences we've had about change and how that is required from a heartfelt change on and it from an inside an individual, um, that it doesn't matter what the external environment does or how inspirational that in, in, external environment what it does is. If inside someone does not want to change, they're not going to. Also talked about choices and the importance of choices. And I suppose just to add a little bit to that is that I'm finding with children is that often parents, or I know at least I have taken away the opportunity of choice for the child. I've made choices for them and expected them to kind of do what I want them to do 
or um, imposed suggestions, imposed choices onto them, approved of certain choices and disapproved of others, which means that they're not really making a choice because mostly they want the approval. So they're making the choice that the parent approves of and how damaging this is to children. And I'm uh, experimenting at the moment with uh, because I still have feelings about wanting certain things with the kids and thinking that certain things are better than other things. And so I'm starting to, to, uh, yeah, create a situation where I am, yeah, talking to them about what their choices are. So back to our recap. <laughs> I get off topic a lot. Um, but our recap is, yeah, just so we talked about change and making real change, uh, choices. And I think I also talked a little bit, yeah, about the benefits of rewarding when someone's in harmony with God's laws or rewarding positive things. And I want to be clear that the rewards I'm talking about are not like, they're making transparent the internal reward that you get from doing, you know, the moral thing or from actually being in harmony with God's laws. It's making transparent that it's setting up uh, ways or it's not like just excessive praise of somebody um, or praise out of harmony, though you were, though I am finding that you natural, I naturally now acknowledge um, when something is good after this experience, because it, 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 when you've come from um, where I've been acknowledging all the bad stuff more than the good stuff, I'm now sort of going, oh, no, like, hey, you're on the right track. Like, this is heading in the right direction. This is a good step. But not excessive praise or giving them a whole heap of things or whatever. That if I want to give gifts, I do. But it's more trying to help the um, the kids and myself, like, acknowledge and honour, I suppose, that feeling inside yourself when you do something that's, you know, really good or you achieve something. I know that in my uh, in my life, like I, I honestly, I've just not I've skipped over those things so much. Um, and earlier this year, I had a really lovely experience where I'd, I'd never had this feeling of just this sort of uh, it's like this. I think like I think I think <laughs> it's like satisfaction of of doing something. So just this feeling of satisfaction that I had that I'd never really experienced before because I've never. Put myself in in a position, so it was a bit. I I took I took some actions and actually did something for myself without relying on someone else, like other people, to do it for me. And the sense of like achievement I had was, was quite noticeable. And I was like, oh, I felt like really really good. And I was like, wow, I'd never because I'd never really done done that. Um, I'd never had the benefit of that experience. making that transparent in the children and is helping. And it's still an area that I'm working on because I haven't been very good at it. And there must be some emotional reasons in me for that, that I need to explore. Again, I just wanted to make transparent my intention of these videos. That is to share what I'm doing with the children in order to correct and change some of the things that have been happening in our family that I feel are out of harmony with God's laws and also out of harmony with love and truth. And I'm sharing them because maybe in your family you have similar things going on and maybe some of the things that I, I say you can um, recognize or resonate with and you may want to reflect about um, how you're contributing to that in your own family um, or how you may go about creating positive change um, in a different kind of way rather than a punishment reward system. As I've said in this video and in other videos, a parent making soul-based change, meaning that you, and that's an emotional process, so you go through an emotional experience and you release certain emotions um, within you, has a direct impact on, the, on your environment. And if children are living in that environment, honestly, without them needing to make any change whatsoever, they, they change. Um, as a child gets older, um, their emotions that they've inherited from their parents are now in that child. So a child does have to go through the emotional process themselves to get rid of certain um, emotions that are out of harmony with love that are impacting their life. Uh, 
when children are very small, often they just have a big cry and you might not even know what it's about. And then their behaviors would just immediately change or uh, they have massive tantrums. And it's just the same for an adult. You know, if you observe a little kid who, you know, if you, if you don't give them what they want, for example, and they have a massive tantrum and then they often go through like a passive aggressive, like, you know, projective phase where they try and make you feel real guilty. And then they might get real angry again. And then they cry and, you know, sometimes it's angry crying. And then sometimes it might be fear crying and they're all afraid about things. And then they sob and they actually have a grief cry. And um, then, you know, I, if anyone's ever allowed their children to go through that process, just letting them feel their emotion until it's done, you'll notice a massive shift in your child. Now, in children, it's so highly noticeable. The same thing goes for an adult. Um, and in our family, I'm practicing exa exactly that and encouraging the children to also do the same thing. And there was another thing I mentioned in this video was about um, soul-based change or emotional change in contrast to physical act actions as change. Taking physical actions isn't change. It's a new behavior that you might do. It doesn't make real change. Real change happens when you actually deal with the cause, which is an emotional reason or belief um, that you might have or, you know, that, yeah, or feeling that you have about something if that is changed and that is, um, I'm saying, released from you, like you emotionally experience those feelings and you sincerely do that, your life will change. Well, that's been my experience. Um, and also observing the children, that's what I observe with them. So, um, yeah, these videos are just to, to really, I suppose, in a way, document what I'm doing and, and um, I, I didn't document previously. I'm going to do a video actually of what it was like before we began this experiment because uh, I realized that I'm, I'm telling you all <laughs> how, how we're changing, but I haven't actually said what it was actually like uh, at the beginning. And I really regret not taking more footage and a video of when the children were very, very, very small because honestly it would be such a good video now for comparison i made some photos that i might be able to put in into some of these these films well that's all from me until the next video all the best till then